All right, everyone. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Jason Levine, and thank you so much for joining me today on the Friday Masterclass, where today we're going to be talking about what's new in the latest release uh, updates to Premiere Pro CC 2022, and largely focusing on the Premiere Pro beta for the reason that uh, most of the really cool things that we're working on are currently in the beta. Now, before you go, oh, beta, well, the truth is, Every CC subscriber has access to all of the video application betas. They can coexist safely on your machine side by side. And again, you don't have to install a beta if you, if you don't want to, but I just want to show you a couple of really cool things that we're working on, some of which you may have seen in the Max keynote that I did just a few weeks ago with many of my colleagues, including Terry White. Um, but there's a couple of other little sort of small things, but big in the scope of, hey, if you're doing a lot of editing, these are really useful. And uh, a couple other little sort of behind the behind the scenes, under the hood changes that we made, which you probably didn't even hear about, to just make exporting to certain formats a little bit better. And, uh, you know, just more stuff that you, again, wouldn't probably stumble upon, but that is super useful, whether you're creating SDR or HDR content. So as always, we're coming to you live across a variety of different networks. So thank you so much for joining. I see you've got John Archer from Mexico. What's, uh, what's up, Donald Ping? Moving Picks Videography, Karen Brisa, so wonderful to see you. FL Studio Tutorials by In Purpose Music. <laughs> it's a long name. Uh, we've got Reverb Mike, Daryl DeSaw, Randy uh, Mill Iron. Oh, thank you very much. Keynote was awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Steve, what's up? Felix, what's happening? Umicorn, Cody Bear, Sleeman, Ruf Rufus, what is up? So many people here. Rick Adams, Z by HP, Biola. Wonderful to see you all. Okay, so without further ado, we're going to uh, get right into it. We've got about six or seven things, hopefully, that I'll get to. Uh, equally Force, RC Pete, how are you doing as well? Okay, so let me go ahead and switch over my screen. And let's go ahead and get into it on this fine Friday. <laughs> Always trips me up to see myself in that same shot um, looking that way, because I kind of have the exact same look right now. <laughs> Okay. So um, as mentioned, I'm in the Premiere Pro beta. Now, just real quickly, if you're not even aware of how would I even get this, if I wanted to play with some of these new features, um, you access this via Creative Cloud Desktop. And along your categories, along the left here, you'll see at the bottom, oh, my head is covering it up there. You've got beta apps right here. Okay. And in beta apps, you will see um, access to all the betas that you have. Now, I, I forget, and Rufus, chime in, remind me here. I don't know if everybody has access to Photoshop and Illustrator. That could be just because I'm I'm internal and part of the <laughs> the internal pre-releases. But all of the video products, so Premiere, Media Encoder, Premiere Rush, After Effects, Character Animator, Audition, oh, and XD is another one too. You have access to all of the video betas just by being a CC uh, member. So you'll be able to download these. And again, these can coexist side by side. I myself have the release version of Premiere installed as well as the beta version. And again, I'm going to call out here which features our beta and which are available in the release. So the first one we're going to talk about is something that is currently on in development in the beta, and it's this new import and export experience. The first part of which I showcased during the Max keynote. The second part I didn't get a chance to because of time. So we're going to show you that here. So one of the things that you'll note at the top of the interface, and this is again something that you will see most likely moving forward, is that we have this new sort of home import, export, and edit. Uh, option here. Okay. So again, part of the new user experience for import is that we've changed the way that works rather than going through, you know, sort of the OS file import dialogue, which, you know, you can still do, by the way, right? So if you want to import media, file import, it brings up this, you know, standard dialogue here. And that's fine, you know, and obviously you can change the way things are viewed and whatnot. But we realize that's a little disconnected, particularly when you're dealing with video, right? You, there's more to it. You want to see what's in the clip. You need it a little bit bigger. You need, you just need more options. So that's what we did. So if I go ahead and click on import up here, this is going to take us to this new import, uh, import experience. And what you're seeing here, this is the sample footage, which um, I imagine we'll be uh, shipping with in the in future versions of Premiere here, you already have sort of a similar look, similar view inside of Premiere Rush with other sample footage as well. I believe this was all shot by Devin Supertramp, if I'm not mistaken. 
from a couple of years ago. Now, the nice thing about this, as you can already see, is that first and foremost, as you scrub over the content, you can immediately see what's going on in the content. So very nicely, again, as I kind of move through. And by the way, this has already changed since Max. This little, this little sort of playback line here wasn't there when we shot this back in early October. So this is constantly in development. And part of the reason for using the beta, if you notice there's this little, um, uh, uh, this is, is this a beaker or a Bunsen burner? I can't remember now. It's a beaker, right? Whatever. This icon right here, um, this allows you to access all the things that have been changed, rate features, but you also have the ability up here to provide feedback from within the beta. So, you know, if you've ever done sort of the, uh, the, for, the for, forum thing, say that 20 times fast, this just gives you more direct access and I can tell you this firsthand, if you make, if you give feedback from within the betas around features in the beta, these go directly to the engineers. That, that's not, that's not an exaggeration. It literally goes right to the engineers. So the engineers will see stuff on the forums, but those are usually filtered through Adobe Care and other colleagues. They're like, oh, hey, so you know, there's a whole thread going on about X. Here, you send that feedback through the app. It literally goes to the people who are designing and building the app. So it really behooves you if you want to be part of it. And by the way, there's no there's no obligation like, uh, you know, in previous betas, uh, you know, people are always like, oh, uh, you know, do I have to submit X number of bug reports? You don't have to do any of that. It's just there for you. OK, so how does this work? Well, very simply, see the footage you want, start selecting it. Come over to another clip, start selecting it, move around. All right, see what we've got in here. And what you're gonna notice is that as I'm selecting all of this footage, all right, it's building, my face is blocking it here, but it's building a timeline sort of in the order that we selected those clips down below. Again, if you're, if you're familiar with Rush, it's doing the same kind of thing. And of course you can navigate to other folders. So let's see, if I go to something here. There's some of my Mac sessions. Uh, here, let's go into 2021 and I have nothing in here. Oh, sorry. I went too far. There's all my max stuff. I'm just looking for other footage in here. Max keynote. There we go. All right. And let's pull in some of this content here. So again, this is allowing me to pull from, uh, different pieces of video, uh, different, uh, different folders. By the way, again, beta. So if you get this, and you will, because it's a beta, um, just choose disable asserts and ignore, and that'll go away. And hopefully you don't see that again. All right. So I'm just going to select a couple more pieces of footage. By the way, these are not all the same. I believe that sample footage is uh, is in, um, it's not even HD. I th oh, no, maybe it's 720p. So th these are all a little bit different. Okay, so we're going to select those here. And then at the, up at the top here, you'll see that we have a couple of new options. Now this one, again, wasn't even in the beta when we shot this for Max, is copy media. So if you've ever used Prelude before, this is nice because what this will do, particularly if you're pulling from multiple locations, multiple drives, multiple sources, as I just did, this is going to allow you to copy everything into a new location. All right, so if you choose to do that, enable copy media, you can use a preset here. You can do the, the MD5 verification if you so desire. Again, this is right out of Prelude. So anyone who's used that before, that's going to look familiar. Copy file destination, same as project, preset destination. You can save it directly to Creative Cloud, or you can choose a custom destination. All right, so we make it super easy to just take all the media from multiple sources. Maybe it's on different cards, SD cards, CF cards, whatever. Place it all in one localized uh, spot for you, all right? Then we've got a bin. So same thing. You want to place all the content that we just selected into a discrete bin. Okay, I'll call this my edit. And then you have create new sequence. We'll call this Adobe Live. All right. So directly from here, we just make it easy. All right. Now this is constantly changing. I know someone asked me recently, can you set individual in and out points here? Not at present. Okay. Now again, this is something that you can do in Prelude. I imagine we will see this. This is why this is still in development and not yet released to the public, okay? So we're working on it as we go, but just showing you this is one of the things you can do. And then once you click import, it imports those files and then immediately it builds your sequence and your sequence is front and center. And you can see as I scrub through this, 
there's all of our content, okay? And again, the reason why those are sized differently, this sample content is 720p, and I think this is like 4K. That's a very, very close-up shot of my lovely profile with makeup. Okay. All right, so that's the new import experience. Clean, easy, video front and center, media first, find stuff, review stuff, create bins, copy the media, right? It's just, it's really easy. And again, if you like the prelude method of importing files, part of what I loved about it was just being able to copy the stuff over. This does that too, all right? Now, the other part of this, of course, is the export part. Now, by the way, at any point in time, if you want to bring more media just into your project or build a new sequence, this is the nice thing is that you always have the ability to go back to import. So let's say I wanted to, you know, import more, con you know, new footage into this project. I don't maybe necessarily want to build a sequence. It's weird. It's not letting me check the box on some of these. It's checking the, I mean, this is, you know, the UI weirdness, again, beta, whatever. Um, you could say, no, don't put it in a new sequence, but yes, put it into a new bin. And I'll call this additional content spelled strangely there. Go ahead and import that. All right. And then if I come up to my project panel here, additional content, there's the, these are all stills. Now, again, once you have those bins, you know, you can choose how you view them whether it's uh, in the icon view or in freeform view, right? We've talked about that in the past. That's our friend uh, Anna McNaught, AKA Anna McNaughty on Instagram. You've seen her many times on Adobe Live. All right, so it's just really easy to organize and just a nicer way to really work with your content uh, in, this, in this latest edition, all right? But talking about export. So again, let's now go to the new export uh, experience here. So you can still, of course, do uh, Command M, Control M, but instead of going to what you know today as the export dialog, which is that modal dialog in Premiere, when you do Command M or click Export here, it's now going to take you to this, right? And this is a fundamentally different looking, albeit with the same purpose, export experience. All right. Just checking the comments here very quickly. <laughs> Steve C, I can always count on you for identifying Shark Puppet. <laughs> Jason Sun is a burgeoning video master and has made a few cool vids featuring horror characters and a shark. Ah, oh, thank you. I'm going to share that with him. That is that is awesome. <laughs> shark wins. You're very kind. Thank you, Daryl. All right, sweet. Okay, let's see what else we got here. Nice. All right, Navid from Lahore, great to see you. E A I Design, great to see you from Brazil. Hey, what's up, Gabrielle from Sydney? Oh, wow, thank you for tuning in. Okay, so the new export experience. How is this different? Well, first of all, it has the, what we once referred to as the SPP, the Social Publishing Panel. Do you remember this? This was something that I, I actually sneaked at Max five years ago. This is not exactly the same thing, but this was the concept of it. So. All of your destinations are front and center all the way to the left. So the first thing you see is where do you want this video that you're exporting to go? So obviously by default, you're going to create a media file. What happens if we click here? Yo, you can rename, you can duplicate, you can do some things there. Okay. You then have all of your other social destinations. So if I want to go, if I want this to go to YouTube, I can enable this right here. Okay. And then of course, you're going to have all of your sign-in uh, uh, options here. You can already see I'm, I'm currently signed in to my channel on YouTube. I can choose the playlist where I want it to go. You know, I can give it the title, description, privacy, tags, custom thumbnails, or I believe I can also pull uh, a frame from the source, which is super nice. So you can do something like that. And I can, again, use current frame or select a particular time. We just make it super, super easy, right? So going to uh, YouTube, by the way, why is this lingering? That should go away when I click away. It's staying there right now. These are the kind of things you're going to see in the beta. I'm experiencing this live. It's, it changes daily or every other day or every couple of days. So different things all the time. Vimeo, Twitter, Facebook, Behance, Creative Cloud, or an FTP. So all of that is front and center. All right. Then when we get back over to here, now we've simplified the actual export and file format choosing process. Now you might think, why is this 
cool or why is this not cool or what what gives okay so first the basics right file name where we're exporting it to and then presets and format and if i click down on the preset menu here what you're going to notice is that right away this is this has been minimized right so today if you go into premiere pro and you go to export as h264 most common format for the web and sharing this is a very very long list of presets right so what we've done here is basically we're giving you seven or eight presets that are the most commonly used in variety of qualities matching the source with using adaptive uh, uh vbr and high higher bit rates medium low bit rates then we have a couple of quality options. So again, this is just sort of using higher attributes for 4K, 1080p, 720p. I think the YouTube one is showing up here because I've used it so frequently. You have match sequence preview settings, but then you have access to all of the presets. So the idea here is that we're just showcasing some of the most commonly encountered ones to clean that menu up because it's, we've just heard feedback from users, particularly new users, that it's super daunting to see this list of, you know, 125 presets when I, I just want to export my video <laughs> and have it look good. The default is match source adaptive high bitrate. For me, usually high quality 1080p. And honestly, I always use the YouTube ones because that's really where my content is going anyway. So if you go to more presets, zoom back out. Now this gives you access to everything that you will recall. So all of the Adobe stock presets, all of your various you know, ProRes, uh, flavors, everything in here, and it's all alphabetical. So like I was saying, by the way, you can see I'm scrolling here. Look at how many pre, I mean, like I said, if I'm a new user and that's the first thing I see, yikes. It's awesome that we have so many options. It's terrifying if you don't know what you're doing, right? So everything is still here. So if I wanted to export this, you know, as one of these XD cam HD fit, well, it would be HD 60 for where I am, but uh, whatever. I wanted to choose one of these. I can do that. It gives you a little summary of all the attributes, right? Particularly the audio. This is so nice to have all of this comments, the category that it actually falls into the video itself, what it's producing. So this would be ideal because this timeline is 720p. All right, click OK. And now that's the preset that's being chosen, and it automatically chooses the format that was associated with that as well. So again, we make it easy. Having said that too, if I were to go into format here, I, it's the same format menu that you know as before. So, you know, again, if I'm going to YouTube, I'm probably not gonna do an MXF OP1A. I am gonna choose H.264, all right? Most definitely, all right? Now, um, one of the nice things here too is that all of the tabs that you had in that export dialog that were kind of hidden right so this is where we've shown how to do things like overlays right and time code and the loudness normalization and uh, video limiter all of that stuff is contained here as well all right under effects so it's you have all the same options they're just kind of more nicely twirled up or down here. Again, all of your basic video settings, so frame size, frame rate order, aspect ratio, match source. And then if you want all those additional parameters, click the little uh, ellipsis icon here, get all of this. Max depth, 2020 color primaries. If this is HDR, it's not. Max render quality, render alpha only. Again, all the stuff that you saw before, we've just kind of cleaned this up. All of your audio options, same thing, okay? Multiplexer, never go to that, not a thing I do. Captioning, we'll come back to this later. All right, effects, again, adding looks, uh, image overlays, time code, the time tuner, video limiter, all of those things. Metadata, all right, this is important, in particular if you're going to be creating um, content for broadcast or other, other destinations where they require certain types of metadata embedded in the exports, you can do that here including your time code, and then just some of the additional general settings like importing your exported video back into the project, using any preview files that you may have created during the edit, or using proxies, okay? So just cleaned up and simple. Again, and then all the way on the right, this is what we're exporting. So this is our timeline. This is what it's going to look like. I can, you know, readjust the in and out here. Okay, I can tell it to use the entire source, source into out work area or a custom version, right? Gives you a little uh, uh, source um, 
uh, readout here as well as what the output will be based on that particular preset. Oh, and actually that content was 640 by 360, 360p, not even, I was way off, so not, not 720p, 360p, it's half the size of that, all right? That's why these other 4K clips are so zoomed in, all right? Super easy, right there, it's just nice. Tell us what you think. And then of course, you also have now this option here. This is actually new, background export. So this is doing just that. Now previously, if you sent to Media Encoder, which you can still do, right? Still, still see that down here. It does export in the background, but it's actually, as you're doing stuff in Premiere, it's, 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 it's pausing and or slowing things down in Media Encoder. Now this is a true background export option, okay? Export in the background. All right. And then, of course, you have the modal option here. So this is exactly like the current export button that you have in Premiere Pro. The only difference is you're in this dialog here. But this is taking all of your resources to export this content. All right. Quickly. Right. So it's not a background option. It's you're you're using everything. You're not gonna be able to do anything in Premiere while you're exporting, but it's throwing all of your system resources at it to get the fastest export possible. OK. All right, Let's see if we got any more messages here. All right. Da -da 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 -da. Uh, okay. Wait a minute, hold up, Jason. You're a singer. Oh my God, me too. Nice, Daryl. <laughs> All right. Mustafa's having some issues with Media Encoder in the 2022 version. Let us know. Let us know in the beta what issues you're having. I admit I haven't uh, I haven't run into media encoder issues myself. I've run into some other ones. So you know that's that's kind of the agile development world we're in, right? That's why things are always updating. That's the flexibility. But you got to let us know because not every system configuration is the same. So we definitely want to hear from you. And thanks for letting me know. All right. So now let's cut a little bit into captioning. Now we've talked ad infinitum about captions and just a few weeks ago, I did auto transcription here. So we're not gonna go into all of that. Specifically though, what I do want to talk about, however, um, are a couple of the options around the auto transcription that are new in the beta, all right? So here again, this is the sequence that I showcased at max. So this is a bunch of different people that I had on my Adobe Live shows. How long is this? This is like two minutes. Okay, so I'm just very quickly, just for the sake of time, I'm gonna cut out these because I haven't I haven't tested it with this version of the beta. I just love doing things for you live. It is a live stream, so let's see how it does. Maybe it fails. All right. So we're going to transcribe this sequence, which, by the way, um, you know, is pretty, pretty awesome. Let's come into here. OK. Oh, I'm not even seeing the option right now. Oh, that's weird. Oh, no. Wait a second. Hold on. Let me let me see if I create a new. Maybe it's because I've got a, a, a pre-existing project. I'm going to make a new sequence from this. Okay. Oh, look at that. Yikes. Okay. Let's go into our text panel here. Uh, yeah, something is broken in here. What? Oh, flaggle gaggle. Yeah, I'm selecting a sequence with audio. Okay. Well, that's part of the beta. All right. I can't show you this evidently. I can still talk about what it is though. So today, when you go into uh, create transcript, as I mentioned at max, you choose a mix, you choose your language. You can see you can download different languages here. This is ideally probably how you'll be able to access more languages in the future. All right. You can transcribe, you know, setting in and out points, whatnot. You can recognize when different speakers are talking and click transcribe. What is in the beta, but appears to not be in this beta at the moment, is there's also a transcribe on device. So currently, what you're doing in the release version is it's actually sending it up to the cloud and processing and returning it down there. Uh, this is not in the, the today's beta, unfortunately, so I can't show it to you. Um, but there is an on device option. So you saw some of this on device stuff that Terry was showcasing with some of the new neural filters in Photoshop. So we're going to be doing or attempting to do some of that. Uh, in Premiere Pro as well. Now, one thing that I still can show you 
around this is when you have your transcripts and you saw that we have that recognize different speakers. Now, again, this beta is seeing these things differently. So I don't know how this is going to work, but oh, they're still coming up as speaker one, two, three, four, five. So this is something really cool that I didn't get to showcase in the Max Keynote, which is that you could obviously name these things. And it does a really good job of identifying all the different voices. So if I come into uh, our edit speakers here, let's go ahead and edit speaker number one. Oh, it's not even letting me do that. Oh, this is totally broken. <laughs> it's, it's the beta. It was working yesterday, not working today, okay? You can name all the speakers. Why is that important? Because as you're editing and going through your transcript here, oh, this is a real bummer because I really wanted to, really wanted to showcase how to edit this. Let's see if it'll let me do it now. It just isn't. Clicking on the edit pencil, it's not doing it. It's okay, doesn't matter. Um, just want to point out again, of course, you can edit the transcript directly right here, right? Whatever you want it to say. And then from here, you click Create Captions. All right. Gives you all your various captioning options. Subtitle default, that's what we want. Go ahead and click Create. It builds the captions. And just like that, you now have, if we switch over to Captions here, you have the actual <laughs> captions being displayed. Play back a little bit of this for you. You can expect to go into a career in music and be able to feed yourself. That's absolutely true. <laughs> absolutely true. Uh, it's always a thing that I talk with my students about, and I have to tell them, like, listen, guys. I love this, OK? So um, again, if we want to now modify any of this, this is where the Essential Graphics panel comes into play because all of these captions are customizable using Essential Graphics. So first and foremost, of course, you can change the text, you can change the font. Uh, if there's a particular Adobe font that you want to use, you know, by all means, switch it to something. So maybe we go into this like um, Barricada Pro. That's very thick, all right. Maybe, oh, it's only regular available there. Again, we could change the fill color. So I love, I love the yellow, uh, subtitles. Initially, when I saw networks starting to do that, it was bothering me. I actually happen to really like it now. You can add a stroke to it. You can add drop shadow if you want to do that. Okay, you can see how the drop shadow applies. You can then save this as a track style. So if we like this style, what is this? What did I say? It's Barricada Pro. Barricada style. Yellow. All right. Now that applies to all of the captions already here. Okay, if we want to further modify that with a different style, I can come over here using Avenir Light, go to sort of classic, classic looking captions. If we wanted to add that sort of uh, uh, um, black box behind them, we can do that as well. Okay, so something like this. Oh, I may have just crashed it. I think I did. just using the beta. Something could happen. No stress. We're just going to relaunch. That's going to give me a good opportunity, though, to just relaunch that and check out the chats momentarily. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. Uh, so let's see. Javon is saying, okay, so when should you use After Effects? Should you organize your scene in Premiere first and then go to After Effects or start in AE first? Well, it depends what you're trying to do. Um, Javon, After Effects is you know, primarily for creating motion graphics and visual effects. So if you are um, working on a video edit and you're wanting to add certain visual motion elements to it, you know, fire, particles, you know, even lower thirds or text animations and things, a lot of that, of course, you can do directly in Premiere, but you can send the content um, from Premiere Pro to After Effects via a right-click menu, which I'll be able to show you uh, here in just a second. Um, or you can import the entire Premiere project into After Effects, if you so desire, uh, from the file menu. So, or just drag and drop, actually, from Media Browser inside of After Effects. So it just depends what you're wanting to do. Typically, again, if you're, if you're doing sort of additive graphics, whether it's visual effects or more broadcast style, you know, YouTube style, lower thirds, or just having a nice background or like a, a spinning logo. Typically, you'll start cutting it in Premiere 
and then you'll transition to over to After Effects. So as I was saying, if I wanted to say, you know, add some particular graphics or something to this shot in After Effects that I couldn't do here in Premiere, I could just right click. Now again, I don't have the After Effects beta installed. That's why it's showing as grayed out here because we're in the Premiere beta, but I can choose to replace with After Effects composition and that's what it does. It automatically creates a .aep of that clip in the Premiere timeline, takes you over to After Effects, you do your graphics on top of this video clip, and then when you bounce back over to Premiere, it shows up and it's live, okay? Now, again, it's unrendered, so depending upon the level of complexity, you may consider rendering that, although in the latest version of After Effects with multi-frame rendering, stuff is happening super, super fast, so it actually behooves you to render stuff out and bring it in directly rather than necessarily uh, you know, creating the After Effects comp from within Premiere. But that's how you get the footage over there in any case so that you maintain time, time code, positioning, all of those things, all right? Oh yeah, no, no video size limitations there in terms of, you know, anything from the Premiere timeline, you know, up to, uh, you know, I think it's, I don't know if we've expanded it. It used to be 10,000 by 10, you know, 10K basically. <laughs> so uh, I don't know if that's been expanded or not. I think it probably has been because I think we work with 12K footage. I mean, Lord help us if you're cutting something in, you know, beyond 10K anyway. But um, 8K certainly, yeah, directly from Premiere into After Effects. That's a great question. I don't, you know, it's been so long. That was long before we had 8K. <laughs> it probably is sort of infinite now, but I don't actually know. All right. Mustafa, can we get some insight into what you are working on with Frame.io? Oh, that's a good question. And oh, and I'm not signed in here at the moment. So, well, obviously we just recently acquired uh, Frame.io. So all I can tell you is that if you're not familiar with what Frame.io are, they are the uh, sort of the primary um, provider, have been the primary provider for online collaborative video review, commenting, sharing, and editing um, directly from Premiere. You can export into this Frame.io panel. You can then send a link to people, share with others. They can comment and mark up. And maybe if we get time towards the end, I'll log in and show you. Uh, super cool. So at present, it's the Frame.io experience that you already have because we're still depending on the actual Frame.io panel that you've been accustomed to using. No, no, uh, no changes immediately. This just happened. There will be changes in the coming months, you know, weeks, months, years, whatnot. But for the moment, it's the, it's the same experience uh, that you have today. All right. Okay. Daryl, can I make stinger layouts in Premiere Pro or in After Effects? Uh, as in transitions for streaming? Oh, yeah. I mean, you can you can certainly make them here. This is again, where we're going on a little tangent here. But you know, if you're looking for graphical transitions, I'd highly recommend going into essential graphics, go into uh, the Adobe stock panel here, let's choose some free ones. All right, and let's search on transitional graphical elements. All right, a lot of these I've already got licensed. So um, here I'm just hover scrubbing over this to show you how this plays back, which it's not wanting to do at present, probably because I'm in the beta. There we go. You kind of see what that looks like. This is like a super standard, clean, not fancy type of transition, but you get the idea. So I'd actually look here. There's all kinds of cool transitional elements, but you know, if you were using something from Adobe stock, you just drop it right into the timeline. Okay, something like this. All right. And this is Premiere but created. So about... it's probably pretty fast. Let's just see that. But I want to first talk about a quote. All right, you get the idea. But I want to first talk, you know, that's not, not super, super awesome. I mean, it's cool. It's nice. It's free. You get the idea. So yes, you can create those manually in After Effects, you can create them in Premiere. There's lots of ones already created in After Effects here that are really, really cool. Uh, you know, and you can see if we just go through some of them here, some of them are very, very visual and creative. Some of them have like motion blur like this one. This looks pretty cool. You know, this is very sort of specific, but I like I like the motion blur on those leaves and it just drags right into the Premiere Pro timeline. Kind of can't beat it, right? All right. OK, moving on. Let's talk about Remix. Let's disable. OK, so Remix is, as mentioned, a technology that we have currently in Audition 
that you can use to automatically um, adjust the duration an audio file to fit the duration of your video, all right? So here I have some music, a uh, composition of mine and my buddy Fred's from years ago. And if you look at the timeline, you can see that it's, it's, it's too short. Now, just before I go any further, Remix works whether the content is longer than you need or shorter than you need. And we're gonna see in a minute. I'm gonna try actually my, uh, our track that we've been working on the last couple of weeks. I'm gonna bring that in here and we'll test out Remix on that. The idea being that if you're not great at audio editing, if you've ever done audio edits and you're like, ah, it sounds kind of rough or I hear the edit or it just sounds bad or just you're not comfortable like editing music, Remix does it for you. Using AI, it knows what to do. It automatically detects the best edit points and then it gives you options. So if we go ahead and just play back this a couple seconds of this here. I have it solo to so no dialogue. Previous streams on Adobe Live. Amazing guests, amazing creative. All right. Let's go ahead and right click here and go into Remix, Enable Remix. When I do that, it automatically brings us into Essential Sound. You saw, okay, there was a progress bar there. It was analyzing the clip. That is super fast and it's incredibly fast if you're working uh, on uh, the native M1 builds on the latest uh, MacBook Pros, even the MacBook Air with M1. Sick, sickly fast. That doesn't make any sense. And then all you have to do is type in the target duration. But even better, and this is something which I wasn't able to show at the Max Keynote, come over to the Tools panel here, under the Ripple Edit tool, we now will have a Remix tool. So again, this is accessible to you today in the Premiere Pro Beta. Hopefully it's still working. <laughs> so I'm gonna take the Remix tool, and I'm just gonna drag this and snap it to the edge of my video. And Remix is automatically going to edit, non-destructively, my audio to fit the duration. And these little white wiggly lines that you see here, let me see if I change the label color, maybe it'll be easier to see. Caribbean, there we go. Those lines that you see, those represent the edit points. So to listen to what this sounds like at the edit points, let me go ahead and play this back and let's hear if we hear any like pops or clicks or weirdness. See if it looks like crap or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you kind of said that earlier, right? I mean, that's the thing. Sounds awesome. Let's go to another one. How dynamic it works with After Effects and Premiere Pro. Amazing. Bridge the gap from you know, handwritten storytelling. Now, if you're listening, you're going, I don't hear anything. Exactly. You're not hearing anything because the edit is seamless. Dare I say perfect, but could be. All right. Then you have a couple of options here. You can choose like edit length. How many edits do you kind of want inside of a track? By the way, if you double click on the audio file, you go into this little isolation mode in the source monitor. This is nice. So let's say that we want more edits, shorter edits. All right, as I adjust the slider here, you can now see it's applied different edits. And one, because this is AI, it's always gonna be a little bit different. It's never gonna be exactly the same. That's such a pained look on my face there. All right, so let's play this one back. Yes, amazing creatives and incredible inspiration. Let's take a look. Okay, that was like, that was a weird edit. It was clean, but I didn't love it. So again, this is where I just maybe readjust the slider here. See what it does. There's only so many options based on the parameters that we've given it. We could also tell it to feature more on the harmonic structure, which is interesting. Wow, well, let's, let's see what that just did. What did that do? Now I've got like eight edits in here. Guests, amazing creatives, and incredible inspiration. Let's take a <laughs> Weird. All right, let's check that out. You can't expect to go into a career in music and be able to feed yourself. So for whatever reason, it's kind of vamping this. Doo -doo -doo, like it just likes it. You get the idea. Now you might say to yourself, well, if I'm messing around with all these things, you know, is it, is it taking more or less time than if I just edited it myself? Well, I don't know. I don't know how accurate you are audio, uh, editing audio and editing music. Personally, I'm incredibly fast. You might not be. This, by default, by the way, nine times out of 10, the default rocks, as you saw when we first started. By the way, it's, this is the default settings again, but now there's like another weird edit at the end here, which we didn't even do. So again, it's always a little different. It always can be a little bit more random. It does an amazing job. Let's try it on something unique and new, specifically the track that uh, I recorded live a couple weeks ago. 
Randy is saying, that is amazing. I could have used that for a project I was working on and the darn song was too short. I can't wait to play around and beta with that footage. I had to manually repeat the track. Yes. All right. It is, it is amazing. And you know, I am, I am very, very honest about, you know, the, <laughs> the good, the bad, the ugly, the limitations, all, all that. It's, it's really good. It's really, really good. Okay. So here is our, uh, here's the track that I recorded, the, uh, the cover of that Billy Idol tune that kind of re-inspired me getting back into recording. By the way, I started to do a little bit of mixing of it. I'm going to take the vocals out for just a sec. Uh, so let's go ahead and just mix this down. All right. Let's do a mix down, entire session. Okay, that's fine. Bitter Taste 3A is going to the desktop. Okay, uh, click, click. Okay, all right. We're going to let it export there and do its thing. Steve, you're now. Daryl, what mic do you use to sing and what camera do you use? <laughs> well, for singing, it depends. Uh, on this particular track, I was actually using uh, a, a classic old school mic choice. I don't know if you can see it here. This is the Sennheiser MD441. Very, very popular in the late 60s and 70s. Uh, excellent for snare drums. Uh, the mic that I use in here for the stream is the uh, Sennheiser MKH416. My typical uh, mic for tracking vocals, however, and I use this on this track for this particular reason, for a particular sound. The one that I actually typically use is um, an Audio-Technica 4050 multi-pattern condenser. Um, it's just married to my voice. It's been my vocal mic of choice literally for almost 30 years, dating myself a little there, but I've owned it since 1995. And um, it's just wonderful for my voice. So it's, you know, but it, as I've talked about on stream many times, in the spirit of the Harry Potter quote, the wand chooses the wizard, the microphone kind of chooses the voice. Um, not all mics sound good on every voice. Not all microphones, even the same microphone can sound good on one voice and bad on another. Even two versions of the same mic can sound slightly different on somebody's voice. So it's just about finding out the kind of voice you have and what really resonates well. I have a whole stream on that, which you can find on the Adobe uh, Creative Cloud YouTube channel or my own channel as a custom thumbnail about microphone, which microphone to choose. So I highly recommend checking that out. Okay, so we've got this uh, mix down here. Oh, that's why it took so long. I had like, a, 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 I think this is just bass at the end of it. It's a bit, oh, it's actually vocal. Okay, so let's take that out. Let's take this out. Let's save this and we're going to, um, I'm going to bring this into Premiere Pro. Now, actually, I just realized, you know what I can do? Let's see, let's try this. Oh, I don't know if it'll work because it's the beta. I'm not going to bother about that. Okay, let's go ahead and import this directly. So again, now I could use import here, technically, desktop, and uh, where's the track? Where did it go? I'm just going to go old school here. Desktop, bitter taste. Okay. Let's take this track out of here and let's grab bitter taste. Oh! I mean, that's just, it's, it's, today's beta is not looking so hot. Sorry. It's beta. It's worth pointing out as well. Yeah, sure, let's try and recover the previous project. Um, you know, and we say this all the time. Sure. Don't go doing any, you know, like your life depends on it productions in a beta, right? I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable doing it on a live stream, but you know, just keep in mind. Can't really apologize. They're, you know, they're all a little different. Let's see if this is crashing. This could be like a file import issue. Let's just see. Hopefully not. Okay. Oh, it even had it already in the track. Oh, that's fine. Okay. Perfect. Here we go. All right, so this is a great example, getting back to our uh, uh, longer, shorter. So here, the music is, you know, two and a half times as long, right? So we need to shorten it. So once again, I'm going to right click here, go into remix, enable remix. Okay, it, it's doing the analysis. You can see it right there, super, super fast. All right. And then I'll grab the remix tool. Oh, come on. No. No. Oh, you finished it. Oh, it's not quitting. 
It thought it was. All right, like that. And there it did its edits. All right, let me just do the track mixer here. I don't know how loud this is. So let's take a listen. Absolutely true. <laughs> Absolutely true. All right, let's see the edit here. Nice, and here, it looks like there's two edits here. Wow, awesome. So this is what I'm talking about. It, 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 it's, it's shockingly good, usually with defaults. Now, again, if we wanna get, you know, wanna get fancy here, we can start saying, all right, you know, I, I, want, I want longer edits, just kinda one or two. And here it, it was able to do the whole thing with two edits. So right here, let's put the voices back in. University, like, yeah, that's just something not, not right. right. Yeah. It's how dynamic link works with after, right? Seamless. Let's check out this one here. So how do you kind of bridge the gap from, you know, handwritten? Okay. Don't love that one. So again, maybe I make some more adjustments. You get the idea. Remix, check it out. <laughs> Hopefully it's not crashing all over the place for you. Beta. Okay. <laughs> Learn the bugs have annoyed us. You're vibing. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm very realistic about this. It's the beta. We're working on it live. Again, these you'll you'll often see updates to the beta almost every day, usually for Premiere. All right. <laughs> Take the beta out behind the barn and teach it some manners. That's kind of old school now, Steve. Careful, careful. <laughs> All right. Oh yes, and what is the studio camera? Sorry, I forgot to answer that. Yeah, so I, I'm using a, a Nikon D850. Uh, with a 24 to 70 lens at uh, at f4 in this case, fixed aperture lens, of course, but at f4. All right, uh, let's see how much time we have. We've got about eight minutes. Okay, auto tone. Oh, perfect. This is this is a good one. So maybe for this, I think I need to go to some other footage. So let's go to import. And you know, I'm almost I, I almost want to choose some of these because they are. They're kind of flat looking. I don't know how well these are going to grade, but why not? Let's just try it. All right. And let's go into Lumetri color. And let's talk about auto tone. So this is uh, an updated new feature in Lumetri, which functions similarly to the way that auto toning functions in Lightroom. So as you've heard me talk about over the years, one of the reasons why I actually started to even feel confident or comfortable, maybe comfortable is a better word, to start doing my own color corrections in Premiere is because we introduced the basic corrections panel, which is essentially the beginning of the of the develop module in Lightroom and Camera Raw, right? It's that those first eight or 10 sliders from there that I'd been using and learned about years and years ago. Well, now we're kind of following suit with auto tone where it's just gonna do a better job of one, Re recolorizing, or I should say, tonalizing. It's just doing an auto correction, but using some intelligence to do so. Now, again, th this this clip, I don't know if this is the best. <laughs> it's like it's just like feet and a, and a ball here, but and it's very low res. But let's see what this does. Oh, actually, kind of nice. Now, also in the spirit of Lightroom, it's not a black box fix, meaning that it applies this change, but you don't see what it's done. Did you notice all of the sliders moved? So you can modify all of those settings in the basic corrections panel to better suit your needs. And actually, that, that looks pretty good. You know, let me, let me import another piece of footage here from that same collection. Maybe one of these, they're all so short. It's anything more than two seconds. So short, this is all right, let's do this one. So I don't wanna put it in a new sequence. I want to put it in the same sequence. How do I put it in the same sequence? That's a good question. There's there's a thing I need to report right now. What if I want to put it in the same sequence? <laughs> why are you making me? Uh, why is this not dragging in? Oh, maybe it's the same. Now it doesn't want any footage coming in here. 
that's working. That's odd. Oh, for heaven's sake. Oh, because it's the same. No, I don't know why. I don't know what's going on. Auto tone. I don't have time for this. Okay. Ooh, that looks really nice. This is also without using a LUT, by the way. So what I love about this, you know, first of all, again, we can, this is where I would probably do something like um, adding loop playback. So I'm going to go to my button editor here. Let's drag loop down in there. Loop this back, all right? And really start playing with this. So it kind of warmed it up. Oh, so many. Today's beta was not the one to showcase, unfortunately but you're getting it all still. Yeah, send, whatever. Oh, just do it already. Stop asking me. No. <laughs> I work here. I can get frustrated. All right, back to the original. Okay. So auto tone, you get it. You saw it, try it. It's good, as you just saw. Does some nice results. Let's try it on this. Ooh, a little too much. Smooth me out a little too much. There's the before, there's the after. But again, the nice thing is I can see what it did. Oh, yes, it kind of bumped the shadows. So I don't need so much of the shadows. And maybe it bumped up the highlights. Maybe tone those down just a bit. So now before, after, not bad, right? And that's kind of the brilliance of auto tone is you see what it did, you can learn from it. It also pumped the exposure a bit there, but that's fine. So you can then modify it that much more easily, all right? All right, so this is another one. Now, this is one of those little hidden small things that most people don't think about, but it's super cool. So if you're ever in a case where, you know, you're, you're working in a timeline and you're gonna be trimming, you wanna trim a bunch of clips simultaneously. So something like this, I select all these clips and I wanna trim a few frames off of each of them for whatever reason and then you accidentally click away, oh, now I just lost all of my, my trim selects, which is really easy to do in the timeline. So we now have a keyboard shortcut uh, for restore trim that you can use and assign. So I'm typing restore trim selection here. I'm gonna click into the shortcut field and let's assign that to Alt T, which appears to be available. So I'm holding down Alt, there's nothing on the T key, Alt T. All right, so now you can see Alt T, re restore trim selection. So now if I were to multi-select all these clips to trim them like this, and then I'm talking and doing my thing, whatever, and I accidentally click away, ah, Alt T, they're all back. All right, real nice, clean, simple. All right, bars and tone. Haven't done any renov renovations, haven't done any modifications to bars and tone in a while. But you will notice we have revamped bars and tone to include primarily a host of different uh, color spaces. So whether you're working in HDR, SDR, you can create the appropriate uh, bars and tone for that. You also have the ability now to create a, a, a sequence or a file uh, for that matter with specific reference tones coming from the audio days. So this is like a one kilohertz tone. Uh, you know, we used to do for mix uh, for mixing on different consoles, you'd have 100 hertz, 1K and 10K. This will generate one tone at a time. You can also have it identify audio channels. Again, you've got some presets in here as well. So as mentioned, you have your SDHD, Ultra HD, uh, HDR, SDR presets. It's just really simple, really nice, something to throw on to the beginning of, uh, of your content. So here it is. All right. That's what a 1K tone sounds like. All right, this is just a standard Rec. 709 and 1080p. Um, just some new modifications there. <laughs> All right, kind of a nice thing. All right, uh, oh, this is another one here. So if, uh, take a look at this sequence. So again, I've got stuff kind of stacked all over the place. This is nothing. I mean, this is, this is like 10 clips. But let's say I want to share this or archive it and I effectively want to simplify the construction of this sequence. Under the sequence menu now, we have a function called simplify sequence. You can see in here, you can choose to do things like close vertical gaps, flatten multi-camera clips, and then you have removing, you know, empty video and audio tracks. Okay, you can remove graphics or transitions, through edits, muted tracks. You can choose all the things that you want to remove 
So I'm just gonna remove empty tracks. You can remove markers. So this is a nice thing I love when I archive stuff. I've got a million markers in the timeline. Very confusing if I open it up five years later, like what, what is all this stuff? You can have those stripped away. Click simplify. Now this one, there's not too much to simplify. Oh, but look at that. Nice and clean. There's the before. Now it looks like it just kind of, you know, compressed everything down. It basically did for this one, but you know, it also had the benefit of, again, if we go back to simplify, do the same thing here. <sighs> again, clean, nice, simple, easier to identify what's going on in there too. Particularly useful, again, if you've got tons of empty tracks and things. Now there's no empty tracks, it's just tracks that are being used. I love that. I love that ability to just simplify and keep it clean and keep it nice. All right. Unfortunately, friends, that is all the time we have. One last thing I wanted to point out, if you're interested in using Essential Sound for your audio, you will notice now that we have a whole series of new partners. Epidemic and Jamendo were the classic ones when we first introduced music uh, in Adobe Stock. Fine Tune, Keyframe, and Music Revolution. We now have more than 52,000 tracks that you can license from within Premiere Pro. And that's just the beginning, but unfortunately, it is the end of our time. So again, have a great rest of your morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world. We will see you again next time. Up next is the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge. Have a good one, everybody. Bye-bye.